All right, you guys, we are going to um, use some parameters. We have A and B again. They're, they, they do the same things they've always done. So I'm going to start off by um, stating what our target is. We're going to graph A sine of 1 over B X or A um, Y equals A sine of 1 over B X. It should say or cosine. It looks like they messed up without saying cosine here. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. To, to do that, I'm going to refer to these notes up here, and I'm going to show you the standard sine graph. So the standard sine graph usually has a period of 2 pi, so it usually goes to here. Right? Um, it usually starts at, we'll go, what, 0, starts in the middle, goes up, comes down, and you can refer back to what we just did to figure this out, but this is the standard sine graph. And now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out our A over here. Our A over here is 3. And our B over here, our B over here is, remember it's always the reciprocal or reciprocal of what this is, is 1 half. And we're only going to graph one period, but I'm going to show you that we would continue. So my horizontal value has been shrunk. So my period, and here is the formula, my period that used to be 2 pi has now been shrunk by 1 half. So my period is now pi. So my period now goes from here to here, right? I'm going to have to add pi force and 3 pi force for this to work. And my amplitude has stretched my graph up. So it no longer tops out at 1 and negative 1. It's 3 times larger. My amplitude now goes all the way up to 3 and all the way down to ne negative 3. So we've had a horizontal compression and a vertical stretch. Other than that, all right, it still starts in the middle, it still goes up to the top, comes back down to the middle, goes to the bottom, and goes back to the middle. So we have a graph that looks like this. And honestly, that graph would continue Right, in both directions, I'm just going to go to there, and it will continue in this direction as well, right, forever. And that is a sine graph with a horizontal compression and a vertical stretch. Horizontal compression, vertical stretch. So let's do it on the left. This guy right here has cosine. So let's start off with the standard cosine graph. Standard cosine graph also max is out at 1, which we're going to change. So I'm going to just draw some dotted lines and has a period of 2 pi. Standard cosine graph does this. It starts at the top, goes down. That would be the standard cosine graph that would continue. So let's see what this cosine graph does. So our A value is negative 3. Oh, there's a negative. So this one's going to start instead of at the top. It's going to start at the bottom because it's still a reflection over the x-axis. Our B value is going to be 2 over 1. Oh, yep, it was 1 half, now it's 2 over 1. So let's do our period. Our period used to be 2 pi, but now it's been stretched out by a factor of 2, so now our period is 4 pi. So let's go ahead and just mark that. I'm going to mark, I'm going to put like boundaries on it so you can see where it goes. It goes from here to here. That's a standard period. We could go down to here as well. All right, so now it takes a full 4 pi to finish one period of this graph. And our stretch value is now 3. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and show you it's been stretched down from 1 to 3. It's been stretched up from 1 to 3. And I should have said negative 1 to 3. All right, so let's graph this. All right, since it's reflected, instead of starting off at the top like a cosine does, it starts off at the bottom, goes to the middle, to the top, to the middle, to the bottom, to the middle, it would look like this, all right? And I can continue this if I wanted to forever, all right? So there's our cosine graph. Um, I feel like I didn't show you all of that, but I hope I did. Now, let's do one more sine graph here. So I'm gonna come down here to sine graph, show you something a little bit different, all right? So we've got our A value is 1 half, our B value is 1 fourth, all right? It's a reciprocal or reciprocal of that. So my period, which used to be 2 pi, 
is now one fourth of that. So my period is pi halves. So if I go to pi halves right here, all right, I go to pi halves right here, it's actually every eighth. And I try to divide mine up into into quarters so I can see when it goes from bottom to top to bottom or middle. All right, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. That Just that repeated pattern that you see up here. Look, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom. And um, my A value is also smaller. It's one half. So instead of maxing out at one, we're going to max out at one half right about here and max out at one half right about here. And just so I continue it, they, they didn't pick a great scale, right? So I'm going to put some more tick marks in there in both directions. And I'll show you my first one. So sine once again starts in the middle, after a quarter of a period goes to the top, again to the middle, then to the bottom, which is now negative one half to the middle. And so the first period that we graph looks like that, and then it continues, and it continues this direction as well. So, oh, right, I did that right. I, I put that dot wrong, it's negative one half here. I'm drafting it right though. There we go. And there it is. And it could continue for the whole graph. So what's the parameter that determines amplitude? And that would be A, right? What's the parameter that determines period? And that would be B. Under what circumstances is the graph reflected? Well, we can see that one up here. It's when A equals a negative number. And that's it. We're done. I will see you guys soon.